Good morning, Day Spring Family Fellowship. How are we doing this glorious morning? It's such a good day today. Doesn't it feel so chilly outside? Make sure you want to be cuddled up here with your brothers and sisters worshiping the Lord. Amen, amen. Who's excited to be here in the house of the Lord today? I know I am. And I have such a worship written in my heart this morning that I know each and every one of us can give to God today. Amen, amen. We all have something to be grateful for. We all have breath in our lungs today. We all can move our hands and feet. We got here. We drove here. I hope that you guys didn't walk here. But we'll talk about that later. But let's worship God this morning. Today we're going to give thanks to our Lord and Savior for getting us through another week to worship him today. Amen, amen. Let's give him all the glory today. If you thank God today for everything, you're going to sing this next song with us. Put your hands together with us now. I'm wandering into the night, wanting a place to hide this weary soul, this back of bones. And I try with all my might Oh, but I just can't win the fight I'm slowly drifting A vagabond And just when I ran out of road I met a man I didn't know And he told me that I was not alone He what? He picked me up, he turned me around, he turned me around hey. and placed my feet on solid ground. I thank the Master, I thank the Savior, I thank the Savior because you chilled my heart, you changed my name, forever free, I'm not the same. I thank the Master, I thank the Savior, I thank God. I cannot deny what I've seen. Church, I've got no choice but to believe my doubts are burning. Like ashes in the wind. So, so long to my your friends. Somebody say, burden and bitterness. You can't escape and move it. You better tell them, say, now nah, you're not welcome here. And from now till I walk the streets of gold, I'll sing of how you saved my soul. This wayward son has found his way back home. You pick me up, you turn me around, and place my feet on solid ground. Say, I thank the master, and I thank the savior, hey, because you healed my heart. Say, God, you changed my name. Forever free, I'm not the same. I thank the Master and I thank the Savior. Say, I thank God. Whoa, yes, I thank God. Whoa, hey, hell lost another one. I am free. I am free. Oh, I am free. If you believe it, say. If you're free, I am free. In Jesus' name, oh, I am free. Sing it out, say. Hell lost another one, I am free. Yes, I am free, oh, I am free. Hell lost another one, I am free. Yes, I am free, oh, I am free. Even louder, say. Hell lost another one, I am free. Hey, I am free, oh, I am free. Say, hell lost another one. Hell lost another one. I say, you pick me up, you turn me around, yes, you, you place my feet, feet on solid say, ground. Hey. I thank the master, I thank the savior, I thank the savior, say God, because you healed my heart, you changed your you name, you changed my name, forever free, I'm not the same, say, I thank the master, yes, I thank the savior, say I thank God, hey, whoa. Whoa, oh, oh. Hey. Y'all, this next part is my 
my favorite part because we get to speak life over every single area that is dead in our lives and we get to declare it and we get to say get up from that grave the same way that Jesus spoke to Lazarus he said get up so let's get up today say get up get up get up hey get up out of that grave come on get up get up get up hey get up out of that grave sing sing get up get up get up get up out of that grave say get up get up get up Declare it over your life. Grave. Say, say, get up, get up, get up, hey, get up out of that grave. Come on, get up, get up, get up, hey, get up out of that grave. Oh, get up, get up, get up, come on, get up out of that grave. Just get up, get up, get up, oh, get up even higher now. Say, say, get up, get up, get up, come on, get up out of that grave. Oh, get up, get up, get up, oh, get up even higher now. Say, oh, get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Say, so he picked me up. He turned me around. He placed my feet on solid ground. I thank the master. I thank the savior. Because you healed my heart. You changed my name. Forever free. I'm not the same. I thank the master. I thank the savior. I say, I thank God. Whoa. Oh, I thank God. Oh, I thank God. Come on, I got it so good. And today is such a great day. He has called us out by our names. And Lord, we thank you so much, Father God. It's a glorious day to worship the Lord today, huh? It sure is. Put your hands together now. I will say. And who could carry that kind of weight? He was my tool till I met you, and I was breathing, but not alive. was my tool yeah. till I met you. Somebody say, God, you called my name and I ran out of that grave. Hey. Out of the dark into, into your glorious day. You called my name and I What they say. And now your mercy has saved Take my soul. My soul. Say now your freedom, God, is all that I know. Now your freedom is all that I know. Hey. Listen. The old made new. Jesus. Jesus, when I met you. Oh, what a day when you called my name. I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day You called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day next part we're all going to raise our voices up and we're going to give God all of the thanks from the bottom of our hearts Lord we worship you God I need a rescue my sin was heavy the chains break at the weight of your glory I need a shelter I was an orphan now you call me a sweetest seed of heaven when I was broken 
broken, you were my healing. Now your love is the air that I'm breathing. I have a future, my eyes are open. Cause when you call my name, say Jesus, say I ran out of that grave. Out of the dark, into, into your glorious day. Yeah. Say so you call me God. You call my name. And I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness. Into your glorious day. Shut it out. Put those hands together now. Give him all the glory, give him all the honor, because he is worthy of it all. Amen, amen. Amen. Lord, we thank you so much, Father, for your love. Thank you so much for your never-ending love. If you have gratitude in your heart, give it all to him today and just thank him. Just be grateful. Be grateful. It doesn't matter the things that you don't have. God knows exactly where you should be. He knows exactly where you should be in your life. He is there with you. You are where you are supposed to be right now. There is no perfect time. Only God's time is perfect. So you are here for a reason. And you are here to give God all of the glory. We gather every single Sunday as brothers and sisters to glorify the name of our God. We see the world, how they gather for things that are not of God. But we have the ability and we have the choice to come here every single morning to surrender everything and to glorify our God. Because he is the only living God. And if you truly believe that in your hearts, then you're going to want to give him everything. You're going to want to give him your worship. You're going to want to shout it out loud from the rooftops that your God is alive, that my God is alive, and that he is stronger than any other, that he is the only one that we should be worshiping in this world. And Lord, we thank you, Father, for allowing us to be here in your home, Father God, and allow us to sing to you, Lord. Allow us to give you this beautiful worship that's in our hearts, Father God. Like a beautiful, expensive perfume at your feet, Lord. Receive every bit of it, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Because your love rescued us, Lord. Your love rescued us, Father God. lift up your hands with us day spring and just worship our God this morning because he is here before I spoke a word you were singing over me you have been so so good to me before I took a breath you breathe your life in me. Sing it only to him, say God. You have been so, so kind to me. Every voice lift it up. And all the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down, finds the line, found, leaves the night. It. I don't deserve it, but still you give yourself away. And all oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. It out to him and say, God, when I was your foe, still your love fought for me. Say, God, you have been so good. Yes, you have been so, so good to me. Yes, when I felt no worth, you paid it all for me. Yes, say, God. 
You have been so, so kind to me. And all the overwhelming, sing never ending, reckless love of God. And all it chases me down, if I still I have found it leaves the 99. And I couldn't learn it, no, I don't deserve it. But still, you give yourself away, Jesus. All the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. So you won't climb up coming after me There's no wall you won't kick down Hell you won't tear down coming after me There's no shadow you won't light up Or mountain you won't climb Say coming up, after me Coming after me yeah. Say God There's, There's no, no wall you won't kick down Lie you won't tear coming down Coming after me coming Sing, sing, say. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Sing. There's no shadow you won't. Say, say, oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. And oh, it chases me down. If I still, I am found in leaves the 99. Say, I couldn't earn it. No, I don't deserve it. But still, you give yourself away. And all the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Yeah. It's your perfect love, Jesus. Oh, it's that love that rescued me, God. Oh, it's your perfect love. It's your perfect love. It's your never-ending love for me. Oh, we worship your name, Jesus. Oh, that beautiful name, Jesus. Yes, God, we give you all the glory, Lord. Give him all the glory this morning. He is so good. Amen, amen. He is so good. church this is the time of the service where we do communion so let's go ahead and get our communion cups out and I'm going to read some scripture to you in regards to it it's going to be in Matthew chapter 26 so just to kind of before I go into it you know communion is is very important it's a very key aspect of the whole story the, the, the sacrifice that Jesus made for us and this is a really important part now, this is really Jesus communing with his disciples right before he goes up to the cross the next day he's actually that night I believe he's arrested so we're going to go ahead and read from this and um, while we kind of go on we're going to go ahead and take communion as well amen? amen Matthew 26 verse 26 while they were eating Jesus took the bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. So what we're going to go ahead and do now is we're going to take the bread, we're going to break it, and we're going to go ahead and eat. Okay, 
Okay, so the next step, obviously, is the cup. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for the many, for the forgiveness of sins. Let's go ahead and take the cup and drink. As we go through this next song, guys, let's go ahead and just focus on the sacrifice that Christ made for us because without it, none of us would be here. Amen? Amen. So let's go ahead and continue worshiping. Altar, 
The Father's arms are open wide Forgiveness was bought with The precious blood of Jesus Christ Oh, come to the altar The Father's arms are open wide Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood. I know what a Savior. Who oh, is in He wonderful? We sing hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, Christ is risen. As you wait for the crown Go tell the world of the treasures you found Hallelujah Give him all the glory today, day spring, amen, amen God is so good God is good all the time, right? And all the time, God is good. May we all take a seat, church. Amen, amen. And we have a special video for everybody. Amen. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Over every heart and every mind Cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom, I speak Jesus. Your name is power, your name is healing, your name is life. Cool. Shout Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains. Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy.
So what did you eat this weekend? Uh, turkey burgers and good stuff. I don't know. <laughs> I already forgot. <laughs> hey, Tony, what did you eat this weekend? Caldo de pollo. Did you make it? Yeah. Oh, wow. You don't Why? know. What did you eat this weekend while your wife was gone? Uh, frozen pizza, frozen chicken, and frozen french fries. Did you thaw it? No. Put it in the air fryer. And wing stop. This weekend, while your what, wife was gone. What did I eat this weekend? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I ate eggs for breakfast. I went out and ate. <laughs> what did you eat this weekend? What did I eat this weekend? Yeah. Mm. Without well, your and, wife being there. Me and Raylan ate hot pockets and chicken nuggets and uh, we put some fries in the air fryer. That was about it. What did you eat this weekend while your wife was gone? I ate Urban Bird, which she's never had before, so don't tell her, uh, with Melody. And those were loaded urban fries and Melody had chicken and waffles. And then for dinner, we ended up going to Joy Love Burger in Tomball. So you never cooked at the house? No. What did you eat this weekend? Nothing. No, I'm fasting. Why were you fasting? Because I feel sick. Because your wife was at home? Hey, Jose, what did you eat this weekend while your wife was gone? My return. Hey, oh, uh, what did you eat this weekend? Nothing. <laughs> Weekend while your wife was gone, I ate food at the movie theater and a Jersey Mike's sandwich. Yeah, that's it. So you didn't cook at home either? I did once. What was it? Crazy pancakes that I'll never do again. They were in the shape of the state of Texas, they weren't even round. They were pretty bad and they were black, burnt, but crispy. Seeing that video is hilarious. <laughs> because I said turkey burgers in the beginning of the video, but I'm not gonna lie to you, babe, we ate a lot more. It probably wasn't that great either, but we tried, okay? We'll try again next time. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, so, um, you know, we, we saw the slideshow, the retreat, and man, it, it's awesome, because, you know, we don't have those retreats too often. You know, we have them maybe once or twice a year. And if you haven't been to one, I really encourage you to go because it is just a, it's a life-changing experience if you let it be. And it's just really a, a time to bond with your brothers and also if you're, you know, bond with your sisters as well. Um, guys, I, again, it's just an amazing experience. So again, please go. Um, I think we're, the men's retreat, guys, please sign up for the men's retreat, please. Um, it is going to be an awesome time. Amen. Amen. Well, let's go ahead and get started with the sermon, guys. I am going to go ahead and pray real quick before we go ahead and get started with it. Let's go ahead and bow our heads, close our eyes. And we're going to go ahead and let the Lord lead this morning. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Lord, for everything that you're doing in our lives. Father, I know that we are nothing here without you, Father. I know that you are the reason why we are all here. Your sacrifice everything that you've done for us, everything you continue to do for us day in and day out. And we thank you. But Father God, I know that it's tempting for us to fall in love with the blessings, Lord, but really we should be falling in love with you more than anything else. And that we put you first, because once we put you first, Lord, everything else falls into order, everything else falls into place once we do that. And I just thank you, Lord, for everything that you're, again, that you're doing. Direct this message, Father, I'm not here. It's all you, Father God. Take over. This is, all, this is your message. This is the message you want to deliver to your people. This isn't what I want. This is what you want, Father. And I pray that you remove me. It's in Jesus' mighty name we pray and believe. Amen. 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 So, guys, I'm going to do something I normally don't do. I am going to go ahead and I have a lot of notes here. I usually take, I'm a note taker when it comes to sermons. But we're not going to go by that this morning. I'm actually going to go by what God wants me to go by, and I'm going to let him lead. So I'm going to let him direct the, the, the direction of the sermon, and I'm going to let him talk to you. 
It's not going to be me. It's going to be the Lord talking to you through me. Amen? So one thing I am missing, though, I do need a cup of water, please, <laughs> before I do get started. I forgot to bring it. Yeah, that's fine. You can bring me that. That's fine. Uh, we'll have some <laughs> All right. So just by a show of hands, church, how many of y'all have ever been in a situation where if you had a little bit more self-control that you wouldn't normally be in? Let's go ahead and raise your hands. I mean, I'm pretty much everybody in here, right? I could probably raise, if I had 10 hands, I'd probably raise 10 hands to you this morning. I am serious. When I mean that self-control is a very vital part of, the Christian, if, of Christian living, it is because you really can't go without it. So one of the things that really um, I really want to get into in regards to it is, is that we, we're quick to blame outside factors when it comes to situations that we get put in, right? Or when tragedy happens or when, you know, just temptation happens and we give in. We're really quick to blame outside forces. Oh, well, you know, it, was, it wasn't me. You know, it was, it was my childhood. It was the way that my, my dad raised me. It was the way that, you know, it was, a, it was just... Things happen in my life, you know, I, I, but, you know, I get it. We're not responsible for things that happen to us, and it's most of the time not our fault if it's something bad, but we are 100% responsible for how we handle it. Amen? We are 100% responsible for how we handle the situations and the tragedies that happen to us. At that point, it's our responsibility. I I've, I've know you've heard me preach before, and I've preached it many times, guys, that you know, I'm a big proponent on taking responsibility for not only your own life, but also your own salvation. I believe it's very important to take responsibility of those things. And the one way we do it is through self-control. Self-control is the key to having us have control not only over our salvation, but over our lives. So we're going to go ahead and read the first scripture of this sermon. It's going to be Galatians chapter 5. <clears throat> but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, Peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. But really the big thing is against self-control, I mean, uh, and self-control. The name of this sermon is called, obviously, I've keyed it many times, self-control. <laughs> so, what the purpose of this sermon, the, the reason I'm here t for you this morning is for really two reasons to show you the importance of self-control in your life, but also how do you utilize it in your life as well. Not only how, why it's important, but how you use it. So we're going to go ahead and get started with the first one. Why is it important? Now, some of y'all may be asking yourself, well, Adrian, you know, I, I like to indulge every now and then. Why is self-control always important? Why do I need to control myself? Why can't I give in to my urges sometimes, Right? Let me explain what I mean by self-control in the context of this sermon. What I mean by self-control is you're controlling yourself by how you react to tragedy when it happens to you, and you're also controlling yourself of when Satan is tempting you as well. That's what I mean by self-control. Those are the two areas you really need to learn it, because if you don't have it, you're going to give in nine times out of ten. You're going to, all the time, you're going to give in, and we're going to go over that here in a bit. But really, the biggest thing I just want us to really focus on is just the importance right now. So we're going to go ahead and focus on one character in the Bible that, um, <clears throat> excuse me, we're going to focus on one character in the Bible, and his name is Joseph. And I'm not talking about the Joseph of the New Testament, Jesus' father. I'm talking about Joseph of the Old Testament. Joseph, the one that had many brothers, he was sold into slavery. So um, we're not going to obviously read the entire thing. We're not going to read all of Genesis chapter 39 because, I, I mean, we'd be here all morning. <laughs> so we're not gonna, if we read the entire Bible, we're not going to do that. But I am going to summarize the story for you. And once I summarize it, we're going to definitely read some verses in it. But just to kind of show you how important this is and how Joseph himself practiced self-control. So the, really the the, the – really the, um, the summary of the story is this, is that Joseph had brothers, they were jealous of him, they sold him into slavery, and he ended up in Egypt. And he ended up in a uh, general's house named Potiphar, and he was a servant in that house. And Potiphar pretty much entrusted him with 
everything in the house, obviously except for his wife, right? So we all kind of know how this goes. Let's go ahead and read the first verse. Let's go ahead and pull it up. Genesis chapter 39. So Potiphar left everything he had in Joseph's care with Joseph in charge. He did not concern himself with anything except for the food he ate. Now Joseph was well-built and handsome. Let's go ahead and go to the next verse. And after a while, his master's wife took notice of Joseph and said, come to bed with me. So basically, she's trying to sleep with Joseph at this point, just to kind of, kind of fill in what's going on here. So, you know, obviously, it's hard for a man to say no to something like that. But it's definitely hard for a young man like Joseph to say no to that as well. So let's go ahead and keep reading. But he refused. That's good right there. But he refused With me in charge, he told her, my master does not concern himself with anything in the house. Everything he owns, he has entrusted to my care. So Joseph at that point is is acknowledging that he has responsibility. So let's go ahead and keep reading. No one is greater in this house than I am. My master has withheld nothing from me except you. Because you are his wife, how then could I do such a wicked thing and sin against God? Hmm. So how can he do such a thing, right? So Joseph not only refused, but he referenced that I have bigger priorities than this. God, the Lord is my God, and I'm not going to give in to it. I'm not going to give in to this type of temptation because I know where my priorities lie, and I know how important it is. And if I do give in to this, there's probably going to be consequences, right? So let's go ahead and keep reading. And though she spoke to Joseph day after day, he refused to go to bed with her or even be with her. It's going to go to the next one. It's going to skip probably quite a few verses. So right now where we're at, so let's go ahead and set the framework here. So Joseph did a good job, right? He controlled himself, didn't give in to temptation. But now he's going to be thrown in prison. We're going to go ahead and see it right now. Joseph's, ma- <laughs> Joseph's master took him and put him in prison, just kind of like I said. The place where the king's prisoners were confined. But while Joseph was there in the prison, let's go ahead and keep going, the Lord was with him. Amen. He showed him kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of the prison warden. Go ahead and keep going. So the warden put Joseph in charge of all those held in the prison, and he was made responsible for all that was done there. And really the big thing we're missing here is because Joseph had favor, and he had God's favor. Now, Why does Joseph have God's favor? Well, it's because he practiced self-control. That's the reason why. He did not give in to sin. Had he had given in to sin, what do you think may have happened? He still would have probably gone to jail, yes, but he probably would have died in prison. That's what I think. So the big takeaway here is, is that even, I know some of you are probably saying to yourself, well, Adrian, he still ended up in jail even though he did the right thing. He still practiced self-control But Potiphar still put him in jail. At the end of this, if you know what happens to the rest of the story, Joseph ends up interpreting the dreams of the Pharaoh himself. And he ends up becoming the second in command over Egypt. So God took him out of prison and put him in that position and put him in a higher position than he was before. So the point I'm trying to make here is is that even though sometimes you're, you're gonna get put in a bad situation even when you do the right thing, right? Even when you do right by God, you're going to be put in a bad situation. But be patient because God's going to work that into your favor. He's going to bring you to a higher place and to a higher, just a higher position than you were in before. He's going to exalt you. That's exactly what he did to Joseph here. He didn't just leave him where he was at. No, he took him out of prison. He put him among the elite in, in uh, Egypt. That is amazing because God, that shows you that when you do the right thing, God will always do right by you. Amen? Even if you suffer the consequences, even if it's just for a little bit, it doesn't matter. God's still going to do right by you. And we see now why self-control is important. Because had he not, there had been something bad that happened after this. After, if, like he was in prison, he probably would have died. So I have a friend of mine, guys, that um, he was, um, he came to me for advice recently. 
and I'm not gonna name, I'm not gonna say his name. It's no one y'all know, but he came to me for advice recently, and I was actually pretty surprised because he really doesn't. You know, he just kind of reached out to me, and he he asked me, you know, how how would you handle the situation? And pretty much he laid it out like this. I have a contractor that I hired to redo my floors. This is him speaking. I have a contractor that I hired to redo my floors. He gave me a pretty good quote. He's a family friend. I ended up going with him because, you know, I know him. And he gave me a really good price. But two days within him doing the flooring, he actually upped the price. So my friend felt like he kind of bait and switched him a little bit. Like he kind of made him, like let him think that it was going to be that low, but then he upped the price on him as soon as he was doing the, uh, the work itself. So you know, he was like, what do I do? Like, I'm angry. I want to call this guy, and I want to tell, I want to, like, curse him out, all these different type of things. I'm like, dude, don't do that. And the reason why you don't do that so often, I mean, you, sh- you shouldn't do that at all. You really shouldn't be reacting out of emotions at all like that is because nine times out of ten, it's the wrong reaction. It's the wrong way to react to a situation. I told him, sleep on it. Let cooler heads prevail. Try to understand why he increased the price on you. Don't just go off on him. Try to understand why. And then make a decision how you want to react after that. Don't make a decision how you want to react after that because you're angry. You're angry and you're not going to say the right things. You're probably potentially going to ruin a family relationship if you do that. Family friendship, whatever the case may be. So we got done talking. And he came back to me uh, a few days later. And he, I asked him, you know, like, well, how'd that go? Like, how's the whole situation going with the flooring? He was like, oh, yeah, they, what ended up happening was that they didn't take into account the closets, like inside the closets. That's why they increased the price. It was, he didn't, he didn't do the math right. I'm like, yeah. He didn't just increase the price on you because he wanted to. There's a reason why. And I'm not saying this because I did anything great. I'm just saying because if you, if you're slow to respond and quick to understand, you're going to get yourself out of a lot of situations. And if you have a lot of self-control, not to lose your anger, not to lose your temper, even when it's tempting to sometimes, most of the time that's not the right thing to do. Because any decision made out of high emotion like that, you're just going to put yourself in a bad situation. Which is why I asked you earlier, how many of you have had to put yourself in a bad situation by not having self-control? A lot of people in here rose their hands. I rose 10 of my hands. I mean, I, every, like, I've done this many times, guys, too, as well. It took a lifetime of me learning and a lifetime of me praying, a lot, a lot of God revealing to me that that's not the proper way to respond. As a Christian, as a follower of God, we need to learn and have self-control. We have to. Otherwise, you're not going to be very effective. You're not going to be very effective in what, if you're preaching, if you're doing praise and worship, if you're serving in the church, you're not going to be effective. You have to control yourself. There's going to be times where you're going to want to lose it. But guys, be patient because God's going to give you the tools. And now I'm going to tell you why, how to utilize them. We now know how important self-control is, right? If we lose self-control, we can put ourselves in a bad position. If we practice it, God will bless us. He will exalt us. Amen? So now we know why it's important. It's because of that. Now for the next thing. How do we utilize it? How do we use self-control? You may be asking yourself, Agent, I don't have self-control. Every time a situation pops up, I want to give in. You know, every time temptation pops up, I want to give in to it. Or every time I want to lose my anger, I want to lose it. Or something tragic happens to me, I, I want to I like just burn the whole world down. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's people's reactions. And look, guys, we're all human beings. We're all human, you know. It's sometimes, it's, look, I'm, I'm not going to bash you. I'm not going to say anything bad about you. If you feel these, these type of things, it happens. You're going to feel these. There's going to be moments in life where things happen, and you're going to feel this way. But trust me, if you learn how to use self-control, you'll be able to not only not let that, whatever happened to you, eat you up, but you can weaponize and use it for your own advantage, right? And the only way to do this is through the Holy Spirit and through God. So now, we're going to look at a story in the Bible. It's, called, it's in Luke chapter 4. And I've referenced this story actually a few times in my sermons uh, when I've preached before. 
It's the, um, it's the temptation of Christ. I'm pretty sure everyone here is familiar with it. Besides the actual crucifixion itself, there was the battle between good and evil going on there. This is another battle between good and evil going on here. When, G- when Satan himself confronted Jesus in the wilderness after he was baptized and tempted him with various, various temptations. Now this is, again, big, big, big moments. And you can learn a lot not only from the crucifixion, but the reason why I keep coming back to this story in Luke chapter 4 so much is because you can learn so much from it. You can le- there's just many takeaways you can get from this. You can preach many sermons off this. And here's another one right now. We're going to go ahead and get into it. So Luke chapter 4, verse 1. I'm going to go ahead and stop periodically, but we're going to read the whole section. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. It's going to go. Where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. Let's go ahead and stop right there real quick. He was tempted for 40 days. So in the scripture you're about to read, you only read of three temptations. He was tempted way more than that, that the Bible did not record. Obviously, it says right there, he was tempted for 40 days. He didn't tempt them three times over 40 days. No, no, no. He tempted him every single day. Probably every hour. Who knows? We don't know. But I'm going to go ahead and keep reading. He ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them, he was hungry. Let's go ahead and go to the uh, next verse. The devil said to him, if you are the son of God, tell this stone to become bread. Now, let's go ahead and stop right here because this is a tactic of the enemy. He's going to attack you where you're weak. Okay, so it said just right there that Jesus was hungry, right? So Satan was like, okay, go ahead and turn the stone into bread to go ahead and eat. That is a, a perfect example right there. It's just screaming at you. That's how the devil works. In your moments of weakness, he attacks you. And he's going to attack your weaknesses all the time. You need to be on guard. This is the reason why you need to be on guard is because of this right here. We see it. So let's go ahead and keep going. Jesus answered, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone. Amen. Let's go ahead and keep going. The devil led him up to a high place and showed him an instant all the kingdoms of the world. Verse 6, and he said to him, I will give you all their authority and splendor. It has been given to me and I can give to you, give it to anyone I want. Let's go ahead and go to the next verse. If you worship me, it will all be yours. That's kind of funny because everything's already Christ and he's just... It was kind of, that was kind of stupid, but yeah. <laughs> Let's go ahead and keep going. Jesus answered, it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Amen. Let's go ahead and keep going. The devil led him to Jerusalem and had him stand at the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down from here. Let's go ahead and go to the next verse. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you carefully. And the, next, the, the last one, they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. I think there's one more. Go to the other first. Jesus answered, it is said, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Amen. Amen. So what are we seeing right here? There's two big takeaways here from, uh, from this story, guys. Two big takeaways. Let's go ahead and go over the first one. The first takeaway from this and how to utilize self-control is you have, you have to be objective. You have to be objective about what's going on. When you're being tempted, you have to know. Jesus was hungry. Jesus was probably tired, probably frustrated. But yet every single time that's actually recorded right here, and it's probably every single time Satan did tempt him, what did Jesus do? He just quoted scripture to him to fight against the devil, right? He didn't say, oh, I'm having a bad day, get away. He didn't say that. No, he was just like, this is the scripture I'm going to go ahead and tell you. You can tell right here that he is not shooken up. He's just stating facts. He's stating the truth. And guys, whenever you are in, it's, it's going to be kind of hard for me to say this. I guess I kind of verbalize this. It's just, it's just until you go through it. But you have to be objective about your feelings. You have to be objective about your thoughts. Because if you're not, they're going to overrun you. They're going to run your life. And you're not going to find, you're not going to have any way out of it. You have to know exactly what you're feeling and why you're feeling it. Um, because if not, these things not dealt with are going to destroy you. If it's, if it's the negative emotions, whatever the case may be, 
bad childhood, whatever the case may be. If these things are not dealt with, if it's not brought to the light, it's not going to go away. You have to face these things. And that's what God wants you to do. Jesus wants you to face the, the darkness inside of you. Because if you don't, left unchecked, you're never going to be as effective as you can be, right? So what I mean by being objective is that, and, and I know some people are, are a bit emotional than others, and that's fine. I've never been really an emotional person, to be honest with you, and I never really expressed emotion too much. But, you know, I've, I've been, I mean, obviously I'm not a, I'm not a robot. You know, I have hum, I'm a human being. I've, I have emotions. <laughs> I just, could, I, I just try my best to control them, and I try not to let them overrun me because there was a period of time where it did. So what I mean by being objective is that if you're upset, you're angry, frustrated, whatever the case may be, take a pause. Look exactly why you're feeling like this. Understand why you're feeling like this, and I think you're going to learn a lot more from it. You'll understand where it's coming from. And the God, or not the God, God is going to help you deal with that. He's going to help walk you through it. And he's going to give you the power to overcome it, because he always does. Amen? Amen. So, that's what I mean by being objective. Now, the next thing we can go ahead and learn from this actual passage itself, and in regards to self-control, is the whole, is really, Jesus used the Holy Spirit. He did. So we're going to actually tie all this together right now. So we're going to go ahead and go back to the first verse. If you can go ahead and go back to Luke chapter 4, verse 1. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. That's amazing, right? So, guys, just kind of like a little bit of a side note. Whenever you're studying Scripture or whenever you're reading Scripture, always really pay attention to the first few verses because that usually sets up the context of what you're about to read. This right here does. Jesus was full of the Holy Spirit when he was tempted by the devil into the wilderness. And what we know, we're going to go ahead and take it back even further into the, uh, back further into the sermon. The first verse that we went over, Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, to, to verse 23, what was one of the characteristics of the Holy Spirit? Self-control. The byproduct of the Holy Spirit. So Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit with a byproduct of self-control, that is why he was able to withstand the temptations of the devil. That is why. Because not only because he was being objective in his responses, but also he had the Holy Spirit. And that's the most important thing. Amen? So, guys, I'm going to tell you, man, I, I came real close to losing control the other day, <laughs> actually. Um, I had a really bad day at work on Thursday. I'm not going to lie. It's actually one of the very few times that I, um, that I almost kind of almost lost it. Almost. Not like just... I was overstressed. That's probably the best way to say it. I was stressing out really bad. So I was trying to deliver a car to a customer, and I, um, I wrote an estimate. It was replacing a front bumper, and I forgot one very crucial part of that, and it was actually like a, it's a toe eye cover piece that I needed to paint. It was on the left side of the bumper. I completely forgot to put it on the estimate. I just forgot. It was just wasn't there to begin with whenever it came in, so it was kind of like out of sight, out of mind. But guys, man, I was so furious with myself. I'm like, dude, how do I forget that? I got to paint it too? Jeez, come on. So luckily I found one in town. I went, I jumped in my car immediately because it was already 11 o'clock when I found out about this. The customer needed their car by the end of the day. So I needed to get this done. Just, I needed to get it done. So I jumped into the car, drove to the dealership. And then, you know, when something bad happens, and I, and again, I, I pin a lot of stuff up, unfortunately. So when something bad happens, it takes something little like that to kind of just poke the dam open and just whoosh, all the water. Just goes <laughs> all of a sudden, I started questioning, you know, oh, my God, like, you know, how can I miss this part? But not only that, like, man, how can I juggle all this stuff? You know, I'm like, I'm trying to be a, an effective father. I'm trying to be a good husband. I'm trying to be all this, you know, different type of things. Like, all of a sudden, how did this go from a toe eye cap piece to, <laughs> to me questioning how, how good of a father I am or how good of a husband I am? But it did. And that's how the enemy works. So I was just, guys, like, I was just kind of going, like, I was like, oh, I was was overstressed, overanxious. And then I heard a little tiny voice in my heart that just said, just stop, be still, and know that I am God. Be still and know that I'm God. So I tried. I was calming down a little bit. I was kind of getting there. I was like, okay, I'm getting there. 
And then I get to a stoplight, and I look over to the side of my seat, and I see in big letters, self-control. Self-control. The sermon that I'm preaching to you right now, because I took, so I take my sermon to work so I can go ahead and practice it on my lunch break or whatever, right? And I see it just self-control, and I'm just like, okay. <laughs> okay, I get what you're saying now. I understand. So at that point, guys, long story short, I ended up delivering the car. Customer was happy, left us a good review. Good, good work, right? Good, good job. But I was, the most important thing is I was at peace. I was at peace the entire day. I'm like, well, if it gets done today, it does. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I'm going to do my best, but we'll see. And it ended up working out. Amen. So this is, praise God. But it's just funny how that can go from <laughs> just something simple like that to it kind of got blown up. It means I don't have a lot to worry about, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway. One last thing I wanted to go ahead and go over, guys, before we wrap up the sermon. <clears throat> One really important fact about self-control is, is that your desire is always going to drive it. So what do I mean by that? Whatever you desire, that's where your heart's going to be. Whatever you desire, that's what overtakes everything. Not only your hobbies, just the way you interact, your desires are always going to be like that. If you desire the things of this world, you're not really going to have a lot of self-control, most likely. You're probably going to want to give in to whenever the new iPhone or whatever comes out, right? You're going to go, oh, i got to go buy it. It's like, well, did you think about your finances before you did that? You know, like, <laughs> um, if you crave the things of this world, your self-control is pretty much non-existent. But if you crave God and you crave to please God, then that's where you're going to find your self-control. Again, your desires are always going to overtake your heart, they're going to overtake your mind, and you're going to overtake everything. So make sure you desire the right things. Amen? Amen. 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 So this, again, this wasn't going to be a very long message. I just wanted to spend a few minutes to talk to you all. And let's go ahead and just go over one more time before we leave. What's the reason why self-control is important? The reason why self-control is important is because good or bad things can happen whether you exercise it or whether you don't, Right? How do you utilize self-control? Well, you be objective over your own feelings, over your own actions, and also a lot, actually, no, the Holy Spirit. That's how you, you practice self-control. You need to have the Holy Spirit into your life. And we all know desire drives, our, uh, drives self-control as well. Where your desire's at, that's where your self-control is going to be. Amen? Let's go ahead and close out in prayer. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Father, for this sermon. I pray that it fell on receptive ears, receptive hearts this morning, Father. I pray, Lord, that you help us practice self-control on a daily basis. That it's not only us, it's you, Father God. We emphasize you in our lives. We emphasize you in our walk, Lord. And I pray that you just keep giving us the strength. You keep giving us the courage to keep doing the things that you need us to do, that you've assigned us to do, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you are just completely just in our hearts, Lord. I pray that the Holy Spirit over all, I pray the Holy Spirit over all the folks in this uh, congregation, Lord, that they just be filled with you, Father God, that every decision that they make is under your wisdom, Father God, under your guidance, Lord. And again, that we learn to master not only our thoughts, but also our emotions, Lord Jesus, and that we put every thought, catch every every thought captive, Lord, and put its subjection into you. That's what it says in your word, Lord. And I pray that we exercise that every day, Lord. I pray that you're just with us constantly, Lord. And I pray that you're just continue just to bless us, Lord. It's in Jesus' mighty name we pray and believe. Amen. 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 Now I'm going to go ahead and bring Pastor Peter up here, guys. God bless you. Two, there we go. Um, all the things that we do, the Love in Action International Ministry and Dream Center, those are two missionaries that we have, uh, Mama Strong and Pastor Daniel and uh, Sister Yolanda are in Puerto Rico.
And those are some of the big ones that we help in Cypher Helping Hands, which is a big deal. So praise God for that. And thank you all for you all support. Whatever you all give, it goes to help the ministry as we continue to pour out into those ministries out there. Next one is uh, 249 in Hope. Yeah, that's next Saturday. So we meet here at 10 a.m., um, roughly 10 a.m. So if you have any questions or anything, you can speak to Brother Brian uh, via after service here or me. But we'll be here uh, delivering some food and prayer for all of our uh, people on homeless that are on 249 in a certain section there. And then if you've contributed anything in 2023... And you have, uh, we're tax deductible, 501c3. So if you made any contributions, and this is important, you had to put your name on the contribution so we know where it came from. All of that is recorded from our bookkeepers, and so they'll have your envelopes, or if you need it emailed, you can get to us that way. You can see Sister Nadine after service here. Nadine, raise your hand. There you go, so she can give those to you. Um, and then pancakes and prayer. Who likes pancakes and who likes prayer? So something came up from one of our staff meetings. We... Um, so if you've noticed a few times we've had people playing soccer out here when we come to church. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a pancake and prayer. Uh, we're going to do serve pancakes on the morning about 930 until it's time for church. We're going to invite those families to come and join us here to worship with us. But it's open for everybody here. So it's going to be on March 10th, weather permitting. If the weather doesn't permit, then we'll do it to the following month, which will be in April. We'll have another day like that. But we're going to be right out here. So Brother Ivan has volunteered to flip the pancakes and so we're going to do that. So it'll be pancakes, probably eggs and bacon. If you want to contribute in any way, I'll be going to Sam's Club probably the week of. And so if you want to contribute financially to help us with that, that'd be great. I'd love to do that. Just get with me on it. If you want to help to cook, then get with Brother Ivan and serving. We'll be having tables right under here. We'll also have a prayer uh, table where we can offer prayer for anybody who comes up. Okay? So that's how we're reaching out to the harvest God has given us. Next thing should be it. All right. Jesus loves you. So do we. Let me tell you something real quick, though, before we finish. Y'all can let the... Kids know that we're done over there. So I was over there worshiping with our kids and our teens today. Man, that was so much fun. I want them to know that they are just as much as important to uh, us and to God as you guys are. Right? So I told them, I said, I'm your mommy and daddy's pastor, but I'm your pastor too. So I wanted them to know that. So we worshiped together. We did communion together. It was a lot of fun. I sat in on the classrooms to monitor the, stu the teachers. <laughs> Got to do the principal, what the principal does to everybody else. I got to do that to Michelle. So I got some corrections coming their way. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, but, uh, but I'm really excited. And uh, don't forget, too, next in two weeks starts the month of March. Uh, we're going to be doing, um, uh, it's Easter season. So don't forget, there's a lot of special things coming up. We have a big uh, Easter celebration. We're going to have the fields over here. So for our soccer players, if people like to play soccer, and have a barbecue out here, and have uh, moonwalks, a bunch of fun and games. So we'll be doing all that stuff after Easter service on March 31st, all right? All right, guys. So God bless you guys. I love you very much, and we'll see you all uh, next week. God bless.